Okay, so now I'm trying to open up my original Lenovo G510 laptop battery. And it took me a lot of time to get this open. But I've already made a video on my channel of how to open the laptop battery and save the packaging. And this is what I did. I was able to not destroy totally the packaging. Next step is to draw a schematic or a diagram of the wiring of the battery. And you can see there are um, two batteries in parallel and uh, three made into three lines in series. So in total, four wires coming out of the battery pack into the BMS. I'm preparing now the batteries that will be the replacement for soldering and that was some soldering flux liquid I applied. And that's done. Now onto the negative section of the battery and just thinning with a, a very hot soldering iron at around four, 400 degrees C. Following the schematic now I'm using some uh, nickel strips that I salvaged from other batteries to rebuild following the diagram. So that is the first two parallel cells built. Now onto the middle cells and for that I'm going to need a long strip of nickel. You can see all this is salvaged from my opening of the other batteries that I received from the computer shop. I basically went into a computer shop, asked them if I could get some old batteries to recycle for a project and they gave me three of them. Out of those three was this Samsung pack, which came out very, very well. They still had over 90% of their battery capacity in them. And so as you can see, I'm soldering now the middle section and the cable is coming out of the end. piece of tape just to isolate both sections and now the second section is done just to measure I should have 8 volts that's correct so 4 plus 4 volts now onto the positive section which is the last part on up top still using another salvage nickel strip with the wire on the end and you can see that I isolated the edge of the positive side of the battery because it's ve now you can see it here it's very very close positive and negative and once you start having scratches on the top then it's very easy to short out those batteries with that vice i'm just holding a little bit onto the battery i'm not squeezing that at all so job done the battery has been re repli remade following the diagram and now I have to disorder the BMS from the old battery you can see I have to remove the, that uh, temperature sensor and fix everything back into the new battery so the middle sections have been soldered and I soldered them while placing the battery pack into the the packaging the plastic packaging that is to make sure that the BMS has exactly the right distance from the batteries to where its position is in the packaging. And with that two solder jobs of the positive and negative terminal, this battery is ready. I used my trick to restart the BMS, which is to bridge the positive and the positive section of the battery, as I showed in an earlier video. Just a final measurement of all the voltages to make sure that everything is correct before it goes back into the packaging and into the laptop. Voltage out of the battery to 11 point something volts. Okay, so you can see just before, this, those are all the measurements of my discharge test and uh, the milli amp hour. I've calculated everything in a line and I should have around 
46 watt hour, so approximately two and a half hours of runtime. We shall see when the battery goes into the computer. So you just have to use patience to get um, this job done and you will see that you will succeed with it. So there was no battery in the laptop as you saw there. And now as soon as I place in the battery, I have full charged battery. Opening up a battery info view, I'm going to link to this in the description. And you can see that the details are still for the old battery, which is 19,000 milliwatts hour. Laptop unplugged from the AC, from the wall. And you can see now the battery is the one keeping the laptop on. And so this whole operation was successful. Okay, so it's the day after. And uh, these are the batteries that I removed. I'm currently doing a capacity test using my Arduino discharge tool. You can see it's currently tallying up and we are up to 140 milliamp hour capacity. So I'm, I'm logging this data. And um, I have to say that this whole um, battery upgrade has been a success. Let me just show you. So what I did last night was to discharge it fully the way that I show in a previous video by disabling the battery from device manager and allowing it to run to the ground. I basically looped the video on YouTube to play till it ran down to the ground. And you can see now I've been charging it the whole day. Looks like it's going to take a lot of time to charge. But let me show you battery info view. So look what we have here. When I switched it on this morning, the full charge capacity switched up from 19,900, which was the old Sanyo battery, to 47,000. And it's even greater than the recognized device capacity, design capacity, which I don't know how it's going to behave when, once it starts passing this. Maybe uh, we will just keep blinking the red light to plug in the charger till it actually consumes the rest of the milliwatt. I don't know how that's going to happen, but I'm going to update in the video description uh, the current state of the battery. Battery has been charging. It's not warm at all. It's not hot. And um, so far, so good. The fact that it got this 47 milliwatt hour is calculated on the time it takes for the voltage to go from around 12 volts to 9 volts. And so it's the computer continues to add the time that it takes to reach that 9 volt and calculated based on how much you're discharging at uh, on average. So on average, I discharge 10,000 to 15,000 milliwatts. It probably did three hours of a runtime and it calculated the three hours times 15,000 milliwatts hour per hour, <laughs> milliwatts per hour, and uh, it got this 47,000. Now, this Arduino charger, which I'm going to, um, which I'm going to credit to the YouTuber called Adam Welch. This is the exact discharger that I am running there on my breadboard and the accuracy has been amazing. So all credit goes to this guy. I'm going to put the link to this video in the description. Um, I, I say this because now the computer has concluded that the runtime was 47,000 um, watt hour, milliwatt hour. If you look at our calculation here, based on the values that the Samsung pack registered, 
do you see here? 46 watt hour. So 46,000 milliwatt hour. And this is the addition of all of the capacity of each of the six Samsung cells. One watt hour uh, difference is absolutely amazing for something that uh, cost me just a few bucks and an Arduino that I already had in the house. I'm going to make a video on that, uh, elaborating on how it works. I'm uh, discharging there and then charging on my DIY charging station here, writing down the values on the battery and also I'm putting the data on the spreadsheet. So far, one of the batteries that I've tested from a capacity of 2200 milliwatts, um, milliamps hours, it got only 1,127, um, and that's around 51% capacity, and it's very, very, very close to the original battery where that uh, the battery info view on the computer stated. But just look at these Samsung cells. These are cells that I got from a, a battery, a web, um, a computer shop that were supposed to all be dead. Look at the average, over 95% capacity still in these cells. And that's just a testament to the quality that Samsung produces, especially since they produce their own parts. But that's another story. None of the other cells have been able to, we can see, have been able to reach even close. Thanks for watching. I hope this whole video series helped. Bye.